let's talk about love. How does love rewire the brain? When we meet somebody new and exciting, they invade our synapses like a virus, triggering neurochemicals that feed into attraction, arousal, even obsession. We get distracted. We think about that special someone all the time, even in the middle of a brilliant, stimulating lecture. <laughs> But we're not just thinking about them. We're building an internal model, a simulation that helps us predict what they'll think or how they'll feel. Of course, relationships get into trouble when the simulation meets reality. Which begs the question, do we ever really fall in love with another person or just with our idea of who they are? Doc, where are you going? You've got a student conference in 10 minutes. Cancel all my appointments. I got a lunch. lunch. <laughs> oh. I do enjoy our lunches. Would you like to see a dessert menu? <laughs> I got you something. What is this? Hmm. That's what I always wanted. The monolith from 2001. Yeah. It's loaded with all the latest apps. See? Wow. What's an app? Max can help you program it. You got this so that you can keep tabs on me. Someone has to. How are you feeling? Not oh, great. Well, I'm just worried that there might be a problem with your meds. What do you think that? Because last week I saw you talking to yourself. Well, sometimes I'm the most interesting person in the room. You were the only person in the room. Carla, I'm not having symptoms. That's what you're worried about. Liar. You're gonna have a relationship with her. You need to be honest. I. I'm <laughs> really. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have asked. I just don't want you to worry about me, that's all. Okay. I'm gonna have a shower. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. If you're going to have a relationship with your real girlfriend, you're going to have to stop seeing your imaginary one. I'm going to tell her. I'm just waiting for the right time. You're going to tell her that you've gone off your meds and you're not worried that that's going to scare her off? Maybe you'd like that. Then you'd have me all to yourself. Do you realize how crazy that sounds? Yeah. That is a stunning blouse. Cut the crap, Donnie. What do you want? It's my grandmother's birthday on Saturday. I'm having a little picnic for her, and I thought maybe you'd want to join us. I don't think that's a good idea. Kate, it'd be nice. How many birthdays do you think she's got left? You haven't told her we're getting divorced. You really just expect me to go to this picnic with you, pretend we're still happily married? It's not happening. Finally got the divorce papers in the mail from your lawyer. Great. Did you sign them? I got a really heavy caseload right now, Kate, so I don't know when I'm going to be able to get to Seriously, them. Donnie? Bless me. It's more of a hostage negotiation, really. <laughs> Come on. She'd love to see you. All right, I will go. For her, not for you. I want those papers signed. Hey, Brady. Did you pick up line two? Who is it? Perfect case for you and the nutty professor. 
Had an abduction case I could use your help on. Married white male, 46. Wife claims she hasn't seen him for a week. Is there a neurological or mental health angle on this? You could say that. The wife says that her husband was abducted by um, aliens from outer space. I know what you're thinking. Why are we wasting our time looking into this? But there could be a real underlying crime here, and we're obligated by law to look into it, no matter how weird it sounds. So... Don't you think you're jumping to conclusions? What do you mean? Maybe the guy really was abducted by aliens. Excuse me? Oh, come on, Kate. You work for the federal government. Don't tell me you don't know that they've been whitewashing this sort of thing for decades. The, the Roswell, the abduction of Benny and Barney Hill. If we look into this, we could blow open the biggest cover-up in American history. I had you go in there for a minute, didn't I? That is not funny. It's a little bit funny. Agent Moretti, FBI. This is Dr. Pierce. You called us about an abduction. Thank God you came. I wasn't sure anyone was going to believe me. Why don't you tell us how long your husband's been missing? He went away on a business trip six days ago, and I haven't seen him since. Okay, if you went away on a trip, what makes you think he's been abducted? Excuse me. But who are you people? FBI, and you are... I'm Preston Resnick. I'm her husband. No, he's not my husband. That's what I've been trying to tell you. He's an alien. She seemed fine all last week when we spoke on the phone. All this alien nonsense didn't start till I got home last night. Does your wife have any history of drug or alcohol abuse? No. I've been trying to get her to see a doctor all morning. But uh, she locked herself in the bathroom and won't talk to me. It's going to be a long time. When did you realize that your husband wasn't really your husband? Last night. I was asleep when I heard the bedroom door open. It was dark. And he sounded just like Preston. So I thought it was him. Your husband wrote this? Yes. The alien does look a lot like him. He looks exactly like him. But I can tell it's not Preston. What's different about him? Well, for one thing, my husband would never hurt me. The alien hurt you? You can trust me. That alien... raped me. You have to believe me. I would never hurt my wife. Yeah, well, she says you did, so why don't you tell us what happened? I'd just gotten home from my book signing tour. I thought I would surprise Ellen by coming home a little early. It's just me. Hey, I thought you weren't coming home until this weekend. Yeah, I couldn't wait to see you. Really? <laughs> <laughs> she seemed normal until she turned on the light. Before you left for your trip, did she show any other unusual behavior? Actually, yeah, she, she's been a little paranoid lately. She told me that she, uh, she thought she was being followed. Uh, I thought she was imagining it, because each time it was a different car. 
first it was a Chevy, then it was a Ford. Last time it was a Hyundai. She said it got a little too close to her, ran her off the road, and she hit a telephone pole. What the hell is wrong with my wife? I think she's suffering from a neurological disorder known as Capra delusion. Capra? In the 20s, a French psychiatrist, Jean-Marie Capra, had a patient who was convinced her friends and family had been replaced by imposters. For people living with the condition, the pathway between the visual cortex and the amygdala, the emotional center of the brain, has been severed. When you look at your wife, you get a, a warm and fuzzy glow because you have deep feelings for her. But when Ellen looks at you, she no longer feels an emotional arousal. So to her, you're just a stranger that happens to look like her husband. She think I'm from outer space. Capra patients come up with some pretty bizarre ideas. They think their loved ones have been replaced by twins or clones, robots. You're a science fiction author. That's likely why she fixated on aliens. Yeah, but when I climbed into bed with her, she certainly didn't think I was an alien. Because the lights were off. The pathway between Ellen's auditory center and her amygdala is likely still intact so when she only hears your voice she still gets that warm feeling that tells her it's you well, then why don't i call her on my phone and while we're talking i just walk into the room and she'll see that it's me the therapist may want to try that but right now we need to play along with her delusion but isn't that just reinforcing the psychotic belief Mr. Resnick, if I tell your wife the truth, she's not going to believe me. She's going to believe her own feelings. And they're telling her, you are an imposter. The important thing now is to get her to a hospital so we can figure out the underlying cause of the disorder. You want to scan my brain? It's just a precaution. Do you think the alien did something to me? I I've heard they can implant microchips. It's not like you should get a scan, just in case. Dr. Pierce, what's going to happen to the alien? And the FBI isn't going to let him just walk out of here, are they? He might attack someone else. I'll talk to Agent Moretti. Get the FBI to put him in custody. The alien's not going to hurt you anymore. Dr. Pierce, this is uh, Jerry and Barbara Brockner. Uh, they're our closest friends. Anything you can say to me, you can say in front of them. Ellen suffered a ruptured aneurysm. It's a time bomb waiting to go off. I'm guessing it burst in the car accident. Fortunately, the bleeding stops on its own, but the blood loss damaged her occipitotemporal region. It's probably what caused the cap growth. So that's it? You're telling me that my wife will never recognize me again? Well, there are therapies that show promise, but in the meantime, if you want to talk to her, it's going to have to be on the phone. What am I supposed to say, that I'm being held prisoner on a flying saucer? I knew I should have taken her to the hospital as soon as the car accident. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew, but she said she was okay. And it's yeah. not your fault, no, no. Preston. Look, there, I, there's no reason to keep her here. I've convinced her to stay the night, but when she does go home, you can't be there. Okay. I guess I'll check into a hotel. I'll call the convention organizers and I'll tell them you can't make it tomorrow. Sub publisher, you are. It's my most important appearance of the year. No, I, I, I think it's better that I go. Believe me, I could use the distraction. Dr. Pierce, can we see Ellen? Is there anything you need? I can run by the house or... Um, maybe if you could just... Find me a nurse. I'd love some cranberry juice. Sure. <sighs> Jerry. Jerry. Please be careful. That's not Barbara. She's an alien, too. So? Dr. Pierce. I don't understand. Jerry and I have known Ellen for years. So why does she think I'm an imposter but not my husband? I'm guessing she doesn't have the same emotional connection to Jerry here as she does to you or Preston. Yes, I should be offended. 
No, honey, this is good. I, Ellen trusts you. She needs someone to look out for her. I mean, obviously, Preston and I can't do it. I'll do whatever I can. I've never met a patient with cap craw before. Never mind treated one. Well, if you're not interested. I didn't say that. How's the couscous, Daniel? Actually, there are some she new behavioral techniques that she makes you couscous with raisins. You hate raisins. She doesn't know you very well, does she? Would you excuse me a minute? Is everything all right? I have to wash my hands. see you anymore. I'm seeing her. If you don't want to see me, you know what to do. I can't be on those meds. They were giving me tremors. I'd wind up a twitching mess shuffling across campus like the local madman. You don't have tardive dyskinesia. You don't know that. TD is extremely rare in atypical meds. Maybe the symptoms are all in your head. I know the difference. Try different meds. Daniel? Uh-huh. You have a phone call. The wiki? Hello? What? Do they know where she went? All right. What, what is it? Ellen checked herself out of the hospital. She goes home and runs into her husband. How do you turn this off? Can you give me a lift? Of course. Well, I'll go. No. I mean, now. We, we gotta go now. Where's Nick? Ellen? <sighs> oh, my God. Don't worry, Dr. Pierce. It's the alien. It's not my husband. It almost looks like human blood, doesn't it? Helen, why did you do this? Why did you leave the hospital? Because Preston was in danger. We were talking on the phone when I realized that something was wrong. I need to see you. I know, sweetheart, but it's not that simple. Is that our doorbell? It's just the TV. Are, are, you, are you at our house? No, no, of course not. Uh, I'm sorry, sweetie, I have to go. But I, I knew what I'd heard. Preston would never lie to me unless he was being forced to which meant he was in trouble. I tried calling the FBI, but Agent Moretti wasn't there, and I couldn't just wait around for her to call me back. I had to make sure my husband was all right. So I went home, and I found the alien on the floor. He was dead. It looked like someone had shot him. But it didn't make any sense. What was he doing in my house? You said that the FBI was going to arrest him. I started to worry because the police were going to find me with his body and they might think that it was Preston. I had to show them that it wasn't him. I thought if I could expose its alien organs, then they'd see. Dr. Pierce... Dr. Pierce, my husband is still missing. You have to find him before the aliens do. Daniel, I got here as soon as I could. What's the latest? Had this ridiculous theory that, that, that Ellen shot her husband in a fit of rage, left the house to dispose of the gun, which they haven't found, by the way, and then and came back to perform an 
alien autopsy. It, it doesn't make sense that they're railroading it. Huh. Dr. Newsom. Agent Moretti, it's nice to see you again. You too. You okay? Uh, the detective said that I can go. I need to stay and work with Kate. You, you're all right to get home? I'll be just fine. Why did you invite your therapist to a crime scene? I thought you were seeing her anymore. I'm not. We were discussing Ellen's case when the call came in, and then she was kind enough to offer a... A ride. Look, we gotta figure out who killed Preston Presley because the Chicago PD certainly isn't gonna do it. Okay, well, if Ellen didn't kill her husband, then who did? A writer named A.Z. Wayland. Another novelist. Well, it depends on how you define novelists. He wrote an autobiography about his alleged alien abduction experiences. The entire thing is fiction, and Wayland sent that manuscript to every publisher in town. Okay, what makes you think that Wayland killed Preston? Because last month he threatened Preston and me at a book launch. He was ranting and raving about how I must have given Preston his manuscript and how Preston ripped him off and used it as the basis for his novel. That guy put threatening notes on my car and at Preston's house. I had to get a restraining order. Did Preston plagiarize the manuscript? I never gave it to him. Besides, Preston wouldn't need to steal ideas from a head case like Whalen. His fans are going to be so devastated. He was supposed to read a chapter today at the convention. So I guess now I'll have to arrange a memorial instead. Do you have any idea where we could find Mr. Whalen? <laughs> It's gonna take forever to find Whalen's booth. I'm gonna try to find us a map. Mm. Wait. like that. I'm Lando Calrissian, administrator of Cloud City and General in the Rebel Alliance. I'm sorry I asked. You better have those Euro 101 papers graded and on my desk by 10 a.m. You know, this deal is getting worse all the time. Your attention, please. Seven of nine is now signing in the Alpha room. <laughs> Costume. Beg your pardon? Aren't you supposed to be Doctor Who? The one with the scarf? This isn't a costume. Ah, sorry, dude. I'm Gorthar from Tau State of Five. I'm coming down with a cold. I let him not. That's okay. Tau Stadians are immune to human viruses. I know what you're thinking. I don't much look like an alien. Yeah, I'm really not thinking about it. See, that's the point exactly, to blend in among humans. Us Talsadians, we're shapeshifters. We can look like any one of you. If you saw my true form, your brain would probably explode. Brains only explode in bad science fiction movies. You'd know. You're the brain expert, right? How did you know that? I know a whole lot about you, Dr. Pierce. Who are you? Daniel. Uh, are you having an episode? No, no, no. I just, this, this, this place just overstimulated me. Come on. You need me to get you out of here? No. I, I'm fine. Come here. Okay. Well, I know where to find Wayland. 
I really can't wait to read this. I love stories about aliens. This is in fiction. I live this. Next. Who do I make it out to? Special Agent Moretti, FBI. That's Moretti with uh, two T's. I wondered how long it would take the government to show up. I need to talk to you about the murder of Preston Resnick. Resnick is dead. Shot to death. I'd like to know where you were last night. It's none of your business. You see? The military entertainment complex did everything they could to prevent my story from getting out. And now the FBI wants to frame me to stop you from learning the truth! Mr. Whalen. <laughs> Thanks, boys. I'll put in a good word with Lord Vader. Come with me. A harrowing account of an ordinary man tormented by visitors from another world and the toll it takes on his career and family. That sounds like a compelling read. Only, this isn't your book. It's Preston Resnick's. You think he stole your alien fairy tale, don't you? Sorry, your autobiography. You think I don't know how all this sounds? The first time they came for me, I thought I was losing my mind. But then it happened again. And I couldn't deny the reality of what was going on. You must have been plenty pissed when Preston's novel became a bestseller and you didn't make a dime. In my line of work, that's what we call a motive. I didn't write this to make money. Why did you write it? As a public service. To help other abductees. Where were you last night between 10 p.m. and 1 a.m.? You won't believe me even if I tell you. I'm pretty gullible. I was tired. So I went to bed early. I wish I never shut my eyes. There were three of them. They didn't talk, but I could hear their thoughts. They had me in their paralysis beam. I just wanted it to be over. I really owe this guy an apology. I'm the one who probed him. Trust me, I didn't want to. Yeah. Would you please just beam up or whatever it is you do? Well, come on, dude. And maybe you don't believe Whalen was abducted, but he believes it. Just look at him. The slumped shoulders, the drooping head. And somehow he's slurring his words. Well, maybe he had a fifth of Jack Daniels for lunch. I thought you were the brilliant brain guy. Help me out. Pardon me. What? Whalen didn't do it. He doesn't have an alibi. Yeah, he does. The aliens. Oh, no, Daniel. We're not going down that road again. Wait, 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 listen, listen, listen. He's exhausted. He's slurring his words. So? I think Whalen has narcolepsy. And half the patients with narcolepsy also suffer from sleep paralysis. Now, hear me out. In the normal REM cycle, the body disconnects from the brain so we don't act out our dreams. But with sleep paralysis, the brain wakes up in a highly suggestible state. It's terrifying. People imagine they're being attacked by strange creatures. It used to be ghosts and witches, but nowadays, more commonly, it's aliens. It's also possible that his story is complete bullshit. No, I don't... I, from his perspective, his, his nightmares are real. I'm telling you, when, when Resnick was murdered, this guy was probably at home, immobilized in his bed. Ready? What is it? You executed a warrant on Whalen's apartment, found this. Ballistics match it to the bullets that they pulled out of Preston Resnick. I'll call CPD. Tell him to cut Alan Resnick loose. Nice job, Ready? It's a fascinating theory, Daniel, but looks like we've got our guy.
Ellen's on her way down. She's just signing some papers. Here's Dr. Newsom's address. Okay, I'll make sure she gets her appointment on time. Don't mention your wife or what happened to Preston. It'll only upset and confuse her. Hey. Hey, Jerry. Thanks so much for doing yeah, this. Yes, it comes right here. Okay. Dr. Pierce, the police said that a, a man named Wayland killed the alien. Why did he do it? I wish I knew. If you see Mr. Wayland, thank him for me. I was going to thank him. Because, Jerry, now that alien can't hurt me or my husband ever again. I don't know why you're so upset. Ellen's out of jail, and she's going to get the treatment she needs. I'm upset because an innocent man is going away for murder. You said they found a gun in the apartment. No, the, the gun was a plan. The, 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 the question is, who wanted the frame? The publisher. The publisher. And uh, uh, Barbara. Wasn't the victim her best-selling author? Yes, but she was the one that put us on the Wayland. OK, assume for a minute that that Barbara did give a uh, Wayland's book to Preston, and maybe he did plagiarize it. Maybe he had a, maybe he had a pain of conscience. He, he goes to Barbara, says he, he wants to come clean. That would expose her, maybe even end her career and his. So she has to silence him. I don't think this is good for you. Well, it's not good for me. These cases, I don't think you should do them anymore. This one's making you manic. No, no, don't you see? It's the opposite. He gives me something to focus on. Keeps the voices away. You're hearing voices? No, 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 that's not what I meant. I just, I just, I just need you to, to work with me a little. Daniel, you don't want me to be your shrink. And I don't want to be your Natalie. Well, then I guess you're lucky that I'm still here. Put this on. Oh, I don't think so. Mm -mm. Nothing gets past my grandmother. She's going to notice if you're not wearing it. Nobody makes a better hot dog than Wiener Heaven. <laughs> you sure you should be eating this stuff, though, Grandma? Oh. My doctor used to tell me to watch my cholesterol. But then he died. <laughs> <laughs> this fun. Oh, it's getting a little chilly. Would you run inside and fetch my blanket? Sure, Grandma. <laughs> You're getting divorced, aren't you? Uh, is that that obvious? Well, you don't look at him the same way anymore. Well, um... He really hurt me. And I am so sorry about that. The Ryan men, they can be selfish and short-sighted. Did you know that Donnie was all set to drop out of high school? Yeah. He wanted to fix hot rods or some such thing. Oh, I read him the riot act. <laughs> he stayed in school. And look at him now, Mr. Big Shot U.S. Attorney. <laughs> right. I wouldn't make it easy on him, but if you still want him, he can change. It's hard to say anything about Preston Resnick and not sound pretentious. So I'll just tell you that his books meant as much to me as my own religion. Preston was already a writer of <laughs> epic proportions by the time it's I see you back here. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised to be here myself. Grasping at straws, huh? <laughs> Looks like you're not the only unexpected guest. Ellen doing here. Whoa. She 
thinks her husband's alive from all the waterworks. Doesn't add up, dude. Ellen? Stitton, I have nothing to say to you. What's the matter? No, you are no better than the FBI. I know you're part of this cover-up. What cover-up? Stay away from me! Did either one of you speak to Ellen? Jerry tried, and she freaked out. Why? Oh, because she thinks Jerry's an alien now, too. She's getting worse, Dr. Pierce. You have to help her. Hey, Rich. Carolyn. I just wanted to check in about a patient that I referred last year, Daniel Pierce. I was just curious how he was doing on his drug regimen. Come on, Caroline, really? You know I can't say anything without permission from the patient. I know. It's just that I have a schizophrenic case that I'd like to put on the same meds, and I was just wondering how Pierce was coping. Tell you the truth? I have no idea. He hasn't shown up for his last three or four sessions. Ellen doesn't trust me anymore, and, and she's shedding tears for a husband she thinks is still alive. Why? Why is she suddenly in mourning? You're not asking the right question. Which is? Why does Ellen think Jerry is an alien when yesterday he was just Jerry? Come on, Daniel, what do you know about Capcrot delusion? Who does Ellen see as an alien? Someone she has an emotional connection to, Barbara or her husband. And now Jerry. But she's known Jerry for years. How did she develop feelings for him overnight? She fell in love with him. What could Jerry have possibly said or done in the last 24 hours that made Ellen love him? I love you, Natalie Vincent. We have to talk. Hey, I, I, I can't. I, I gotta find Kate. I just figured out who killed Preston Resnick. You and your wife have known the Resnicks for a long time, haven't you, Mr. Bruckner? Maybe uh, 15 years. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Here. Got these off Facebook. Seems like you've all spent a lot of time together, haven't you? Looks like you took trips. Bali, Venice. Yeah, we're good friends. But you didn't bring me over here to look at old vacation photos. Mr. Buckner, when you heard Ellen's diagnosis, you said you were offended that she didn't see you as an alien. What did, what did you mean by that? <clears throat> it's, a, it's a bad joke. Are you sure? It seemed to me you were a little upset that she didn't have the same feelings for you as she did for her husband or even your wife. You know, maybe she was closer to my wife than she was to me, but so what? Well, I must have stung at least a little bit. Well, maybe a little. You've been running a lot of cars lately. Six in the last two months. So? It says here that you rented a Hyundai Sonata from Glenview Rentals on August 30th, the same day Ellen drove off the road after she was distracted by a Hyundai. Oh, come on. There's got to be a million of those cars on the road. I mean, what, what, what are you saying? I'm hoping you can tell us why someone who owns two luxury German sedans would bother paying for run-of-the-mill rentals in his own town. You were stalking Ellen Resnick. If you couldn't follow her in your own car, she'd recognize you. And one day, you followed her too closely. And she got spooked, and she hit a telephone pole. Um, I am not saying anything else until I talk to my lawyer. A woman who you obviously cared about suffered a debilitating brain injury, all because of you. Doesn't that make you feel the slightest bit guilty? Wait, 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 wait. Uh, Kate, that's not fair. I mean, Jerry couldn't have known about Ellen's aneurysm. That was your fault, right? It wasn't. No, it was her husband's, really. Well, she was only taken her to the hospital. They'd have given her a CT scan, and the doctors might have been able to stop the bleed in time. I mean, how could a husband neglect his wife like that? She deserved better. She deserved someone who would take care of her. But first, you had to get Preston out of the way. What? No. What? 
No, 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 that's not... You, you didn't mean to hurt Preston, did no, you? No, I just wanted him to go away. No, I went over there to tell him there's no point of them being married. I mean, they couldn't be together anymore. I mean, now that she thought he was an alien, and Preston just wouldn't listen. He, he told me he thought I was crazy. And, and that's when I realized that, that there was no way he was ever going to leave Ellen. There was only one way to make sure that he never saw her again. But you needed to pin the crime on someone. You knew that Wayland had threatened both Preston and your wife. No one would question that Wayland was the killer. So you planted the gun in his apartment. But then at the convention, Ellen thought you were an alien, too. It didn't make sense to me until I remember what she said at the police station. Well, if you see Mr. Wayland, thank him for me. She was expressing gratitude to the wrong person. So you had to set the record straight. That nut job did not help her. I did. I told her the truth. You killed the alien? I, I did. Why? I, I did it to protect you all. Look, I don't know if you want to hear this, but I have loved you for so long. Jerry, I'm married. I know, I know, but Preston's not coming home. Wait, what are, what are you saying? <sighs> Look, the FBI and Dr. Pierce didn't want me to tell you, but you deserve the truth, huh? What truth? Preston is dead, huh? I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I should cry for hours. I understand why Ellen would be grateful to you for killing the imposter. And she felt more than that, didn't she? How did you make her love you, Jerry? What to check on her? He invited me in. And, uh, it just happened. It's the most wonderful moment of my life. She was grieving and she reached out to you. But it didn't last long, did it? No. What happened, Jerry? The sun came up. Human emotions are such a mystery, aren't they? Affirmative, Captain. It's been fun. Next time I'm on your planet, I'll look you up. It's rare that my hallucinations are more delusional than I am. Oh, come on. You know you're not really from another planet. That's what you're supposed to think. to give that back to you. Keep it. Donnie, not keeping it. I gave it to you. It's yours. Sell it if you don't want it. Hang on. Your papers. It's promised. Thanks. I guess that's that. Kate, Kate. 
I screwed this up. I cheated and I lied. And I'm still not being honest with you. I told you that I was transferred back here, but the truth is, I asked for this transfer. Because I missed you. you can file those if you want. I'm hoping you won't. Oh, hey. Hey, I've been uh, trying to call you. Yeah, I know. I, I thought it was better that we talk in person. Well, but it, it, look, before you say anything, something I need to say to you, I, uh, I haven't been completely honest with you. I am off my meds. I, I, I should have told you sooner. I'm sorry. I... Daniel, I already knew. You did? I didn't mean to eavesdrop, but I heard you in your office talking to Natalie. Oh, that, that doesn't mean... I heard you say that you loved her. You don't understand. <laughs> I have a completely different relationship with her than I have with you. Daniel, please, do you hear yourself? It was wrong of me to, to go off my meds and, and not tell you I'm sorry. No, this whole thing is my fault. You came to me as a patient. But when you told me that you saw me once 25 years ago and that you've fallen in love with me at first sight, I guess I was taken by how romantic that sounded. And then you went on your meds and you started getting better. And I was so attracted to you. But I guess I was the one that was delusional to convince myself that there was a world in which this relationship could be healthy for either of us. But it was a mistake. Carolyn, please. The, the, Daniel, I can't see you anymore. I'm sorry. Go after her. Tell her that you'll get help. Tell her that you'll go back on your meds. Tell her that she means more to you than I do. No. I can't lie to her anymore. Why do we bother with relationships? Neuropsychiatrists say that we're hardwired to crave intimate connections. We long for love. Of course, the reality is it usually ends in heartache. Leaving our delicate psyches bruised, if not completely shattered. Why do we even bother playing those odds? I guess because you only have to get it right once. And when it's right, you know it. Even the memory of a fulfilling relationship can sustain us and remind us that although we may be feeling down at this particular moment, we're never truly alone.